Good morning. It's good to see a few of you here today uh, for chapel. It's uh, Mara Saudi's uh, chapel time, and I've really enjoyed getting to know her a little bit during her time at Westminster and talking about her chapel last week and her dreams for the future and and uh, and where that's going to take her. Uh, as they say, God only knows, and that's probably true. So. Uh, we're grateful for that. A couple items this week to be thinking about on Mass will be on Saturday evening at 7. And then on Sunday evening as part of our worship, the music uh, program of Westminster is going to be performing in addition to the worship liturgy uh, for our ways Requiem. And so that should be a great evening of worship and music. And we're grateful to everyone who's involved in that, singers and musicians who are going to be playing. Chapel speaker this week on Friday is uh, uh, Katie G Griffith. And so um, if you uh, are around on Friday, join us. And then on Monday, on Monday is Tiffany. And she's real excited. I can just feel it with that smile. She's got her down. Uh, Ash Wednesday is coming up on uh, February 18th. Hard to imagine we're already thinking about this Lenten season. Uh, but Father Michael Peck is going to be our uh, speaker on uh, Wednesday afternoon. That's an afternoon service as opposed to an evening service. So it'll be 4.30 in the afternoon here in the chapel as opposed to 7 p.m. So uh, it's uh, great to have you here. And as we gather, <clears throat> let me offer a, a prayer and we'll begin. Lord God, as we come in out of the cold today, we pray giving thanks to you for the warmth that we find within this space. May this worship space be filled with grace this day as we gather, as we sing the songs and we hear the scriptures read and we uh, share in the message of Mara. May her words be your words. May her words and your words come to us and fill us with the hope that we need as we celebrate the gift of your love. We ask this in your son's holy name. Amen. Stay seated. Stay seated. All right, if you'll join me in singing. The first reading is John 3, 8. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Our second reading is from John 15, verses 12 to 13. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. When Maya asked me to introduce her today, I began to think a lot about our friendship, wondering which stories I should tell, and wondering how in the world I could eloquently describe the bond that we share. And I realized it's impossible because it's something that I'm not really sure that I understand myself. I think that sometimes people just come into your lives and they fill a place in your heart that you didn't know was empty. God puts people in our lives for a reason, to support us, to teach us, to challenge us, or to change us. And I know that God put Mara in my life to do all of these things. She supports me even if she doesn't agree with my decisions. She teaches me every day to be kinder, to put others before myself, and to laugh in the face of life's difficulties. She challenges me to work a little harder, to love a little deeper, and to be the best version of myself. And I know that having her in my life has changed me. Our friendship has brought me immeasurable joy. But if I could measure that joy, I think I would measure it in Bachelor Mondays, <laughs> Pretty Little Liar Tuesdays, and Bridal Fridays. I would measure it in the number of coffee dates we've shared, the number of emojis we've used while texting each other, the number of One Tree Hill episodes we've binge watched, and the number of lyrics on T. Swift's 1989 album that we've memorized. One of my English professors once said, it is rare in life to find someone who will allow you to be yourself unconditionally. I think that if you ever find someone who does that, somebody who accepts you for your beauty, your strangeness, and your ugliness, you found your soulmate. With that said, I'm honored to introduce to you my best friend, my sister, and my soulmate. <laughs> <laughs> 
Marasati. Need a second after that? It's okay. So hi. Think before I get started, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, it really means a lot to me. Now that my eyes are clear. Okay. <laughs> Today I want to talk to you about two questions that a lot of college students struggle with. Especially their senior year, possibly two of the most important questions we'll ever ask ourselves. These two profound inquiries are who am I and what is my purpose here? The first question, who am I, I've struggled with a lot. A lot through freshman year, sophomore year, trying to get to where I am now. Many people harp over this first question. The answer seems entirely too complex, when in reality it can be pretty simple. We just need to realize it. I could tell you that my name is Mara Catherine Sadi. I have brown hair and blue eyes. I'm five foot five and a half, and I am pale even in the summer. Do you know me? Not really, but you could describe my appearance or identify me in a prison lineup. I could also then tell you that I have a profound love of cheese. Being a cat lady seems like an appealing idea for my future, and I am a coffee addict. Now you might know me a little better that you still do not know the important things. My pap was a minister, and he said in one of his sermons that there is something inside each of us that is more than flesh. We cannot see it under the magnifying glass any more than we can take a violin apart and find the music. There is something inside each of us that makes us who we are, and it can tell volumes about who we are. So who am I? I am Mara Catherine Zotti, and I am a child of God. That is what makes me who I am. I cannot pinpoint the exact moment when I became a child of God. I never had an aha moment or a big epiphany. I think it was a bunch of little moments that seemed inconsequential at the time that have shaped my life in this huge way. It all started with my wonderful family. Okay. I was brought up in a house full of love, loud music, and laughter. My parents gave me the freedom to be whatever I wanted. I was never pressured or told what I had to be in life. They just sat back and let me get there on my own, holding my hand along the way. God gave me these two wonderful people to help guide me through life because he knew they were exactly what I needed. I grew up going to church where more of these little moments continued to happen, shaping me into the child of God I am today. As Sydney read, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Everyone born of the Spirit is like the wind. You can feel and hear the wind, but you have no idea where it's going. God knows where it is going, and God knows where you are going, because he knows where you need to be. He's taking you to places that shape who you are and help you to become a faithful child of God. So if you're waiting for some big aha moment, maybe you should take a step back. God is in the small moments, and that's where you need to look. One of our weaknesses as children of God is not that we think too much of ourselves, but too little. I thought this in the past as well. Why would God care about me? I'm just me, five foot five and a half, brown hair, blue eyes, nothing special. But think, there are literally billions of birds in the world. I understand there are over 300 varieties of hummingbirds alone. My Google search said that I was right. Each of these creatures is under God's watchful eye. If God has regard for each of them, think how carefully and lovingly he must regard each of us. So lift your heads a little higher this morning. Straighten those shoulders, look every person you meet in the eye as an equal, because you are a child of God. The next question we all struggle with is what is my purpose? I have to say, I'm struggling with this a lot right now. When I came to college, I was amazed by the people I was surrounded by. I'm surrounded by all these people who have such big dreams and goals. I know that God has a plan, and I've always, entrust, I've always had trust in that. But what was his plan for me? I've been thinking about it a lot lately, and God's plan for us is actually quite simple. As Anna read, God has commanded us to love. We are commanded by God to love one another, and that is our purpose in life, to lead a life full of love. We are to love one another as God loves us. And think about how much that is. God's love for us is unwavering and unconditional. We are not only supposed to love each other, we are supposed to love each other so immensely. I know that love is not something that always comes naturally. Love is something you work at, nurture, and sustain with prayers and patience. What makes someone good at anything? Practice. A commitment to love begins with a commitment to sensitivity. 
Everyone likes to feel that he or she is being noticed. Is there anything more frustrating or disheartening than to try to talk to someone who isn't listening to you? All of us want to feel that someone understands. A commitment to love is also a commitment to acceptance. Love implies acceptance. We may not have the perfect significant other, the perfect siblings, the perfect parents, or the perfect friends. Fortunately, perfection is not required of any of us. Patience and understanding are. We must work at love, and if we work at it, we will witness amazing things. I don't know if any of you have read the book Love Does by Bob Goff, but if you haven't, I highly suggest it. And if you need to find it, you can come find me, because I have it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story that Bob writes about in his book. It's about a guy named Ryan, who really did lead a life of immense love. Bob Goff owned a house by the water that has a path where couples often walk by that hold hands. And one day, a guy was walking along the path by himself and introduced himself by saying, Hi, I'm Ryan, and I'm in love. He then proceeded to ask if he could propose to his girlfriend in Bob's backyard. Bob was at first taken aback by this love blaze stranger, but then he agreed wholeheartedly. Ryan then made frequent trips back to Bob's house before the big day, each time with another idea to make the proposal even better. First, he wanted to have people serve them dinner on Bob's back porch. Then it turned into a party where Ryan's friends and family were serving the dinner on Bob's back porch. Then one day, Ryan came back and asked Bob if he had a boat on which he could propose after the party. And Bob, in fact, did have a boat that he readily agreed to loan out for this grand event. Ryan was so driven by his immense love that it led him to ask extraordinary things. This love inspired Bob to come up with a surprise of his own, conspiring with the Coast Guard to set off fireworks after Ryan proposed. And the girl did say yes. <laughs> we should all be inspired by Ryan's love. Ryan's love led him to that extraordinary moment and inspired others. If you let love lead your life, who knows who you will inspire in the process. In his book, Bob Goff says, that's what love does. It pursues blindly, unflinchingly, and without end. When you go after something you love, you'll do anything it takes to get it, even if it costs everything. We are children of God, and God has commanded us to love. So I hope that you let love lead your life. It will take you to extraordinary places. Love led me here. Love led me to all of you. Living a life of love will lead me to where God wants me to be. Thank you all. All right, thank you. Thank you for good words and for a good selection of songs that fit the message of your day. Uh, God calls us by name, and when we ask ourselves, who are we? The answer is, we are God's. And that calling started when you were a little person and your parents turned up the music and, and you all jammed together and sang and had a good time and began to develop into the person you are today. And that gift of God is one that calls us by name and calls us to love. Not only to love, but to remind us that we are loved. And that love is what gets us through each day in the journey. When the journey gets a little bit difficult, that love is present. When the journey gets really difficult, that love is present. When the journey is going really well, again, that love is present. And because that love is so strong, we then have the ability to share that love with others. And that's our calling. And so whatever it is that God has in store for you, I think I started this by saying God only knows. The reality is that's true. Whatever it is, know that you are called to share God's love, as we all are. So as you go forth, Find ways that you can share that message of God's love with others today, somewhere on this campus. So in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we go forth knowing that the Lord has blessed us with his presence. Amen.